Jake Ludington here at HP Discover, and I'm here with Chris Selland. And Vertica is showing off something fairly cool at Discover here in Barcelona around Earth Insights, which is a, a project to kind of do some animal tracking. Well, yeah, it's a project, and it's really HP is showing off, and Vertica is a key part of it, but there's it's running on HP servers. It was delivered and built by HP Enterprise Services. There's HP tablets involved, so there's a lot of parts of HP. We are definitely the core analytics engine, and it's really about analyzing wildlife and species in the rainforest. And, you know, it's really a project that has great societal impact and that we're really, really proud to be a part of. So how does Vertica make that easier? Well, Vertica is basically the engine that we're pulling all of this data that's coming from these cameras and these climate sensors and these humidity sensors. And what we're really doing is we're monitoring the environment, we're monitoring the rainforest, and we're also photographing, you know, and these are automated photographs are basically camera stations sitting, I believe there's about a thousand of them around different areas of the rainforest, and there'll be more and more over time. We're going to be growing and expanding this. So we're taking pictures and analyzing what the actual species are doing, how they're moving, when they're appearing, and how their population is rising, growing, you know, shrinking, so on and so forth. Hopefully in most cases it's rising. And then also, you know, we, we need to know why. So if there's a segment of the forest that we're analyzing where, you know, certain and certain species is appearing fairly regularly and that regularity drops off, <clears throat> why is that happening? Is that because there's a problem? Is that because a predator's moved into the area? Is that because the weather's changed or the climate's changed or the season's changed? So we need to be able to look at all of these things and correlate all these data, different data types so we can really understand what's going on and what's actually taking place. So how is um, using Vertica and kind of this overall solution uh, making, like what, what problem did that solve in terms of um, uh, the way that it was being done before? Well, Conservation International had a lot of data to crunch and doing it manually and also cross-correlating. You know, Colin Mahoney was talking this morning in the press conference about how, you know, when you start to basically take different data types and sources and put them together and analyze them together, you start to see correlations and trends that you normally wouldn't see. You know, the kinds of things like, you know, why are we all of a sudden seeing, you know, the bear that lives in that cave, for instance, less often? Well, is it because the predators moved in? Is it because the weather's changed? The season's changed? Like, what's driving that behavior? If you're just monitoring the behavior by itself, then you can maybe come up with a certain set of solutions, conclusions, correlations, but you don't really see it until you see the whole thing. And trying to do that by hand and trying to do that manually, or really even trying to do that with kind of last generation tools is very, very hard. So as, as you know, big data is ultimately about the three V's. It's about not just, but it's not just big. So it's partly about the volume, but it's also about the velocity and the variety. And there's a variety of different types of data we have to bring together here and really cross correlate and you know look, look at the analytics for what's going on in a number of different ways. So we're sort of, you know, looking at, looking at it one way, looking at it another way, bringing in different data sets, and being able to also build models. Because what they're really doing is they're not just taking observations and drawing conclusions, but they're modeling the behavior of the different species. And that's really where, you know, and you, the more data you have, the higher the confidence level you have in your models. So you need a lot of data to be able to do this well. But, you know, they're building basically thousands, actually it's hundreds of thousands of models per species. So, so it's a very complex scenario. And, to, you know, to be able to actually know what's going on and what's causing what, there's a lot of complexity there. And doing it, you know, doing it with last generation tools or trying to do that manually just wasn't possible. So we've really accelerated the process because now the scientists can basically be sitting thousands of miles away in a lab looking at this data and actually gain some understanding for what's happening and what can be done about it. That's a good segue into uh, Vertica 7. Vertica's been out on the market for, for quite a while now. What's, what's new in this uh, latest version? Well, the latest version of Vertica has a number of new features. The, I wouldn't say the biggest one, but certainly a really big one for us is something that we call Flex Tables, which has actually led to a new product called Flex Zone. What Flex Zone does is allow you to use Vertica, allow customers to use Vertica to explore what we call semi-structured data. Um, lots of people tend to talk of data as either structured or unstructured, and that's a massive oversimplification because the reality, data is like a bell curve, data types are like a bell curve. I mean, we certainly have our traditional enterprise data and the data that sits in data warehouse, typical structured data, and Vertica analyzes that as, you know, faster than really any product on the market, but, and that data is still growing. You know, that's like if I'm dealing with customers, you know, let's put aside the rainforest and talk about commercial application here. You know, if I'm dealing with customers, that's my reservation system data or my CRM data or, you know, my customer data warehouse, that traditional stuff. The new stuff, the stuff that's growing really fast is like the social data, the sensor data, the log files. So, you know, we have so many customers that are in, 
you know, various customer analytics, web analytics scenarios where they really need to understand like, you know, when the customer is browsing, when the customer is using our system or using our game, we have a lot of gaming customers, for instance, what are they doing? How are they behaving? What does that mean for their relationship with us? You know, what are they tweeting about us online? You know, and, and so there's all these new data types and you talk about machine data. You know, I like to talk about the airlines a lot because I fly a lot. You know, and so it was funny, there was an airline that we were talking to not long ago who was talking about how they had this staff of two people and their job was to answer like 5,000 angry tweets a day. And that, that was their job. And they were doing that because they hoped it would improve customer satisfaction. And then they suddenly came to a recognition that they also had all this data from the planes that was telling them, you know, things that would allow them to do a better job of maintaining their fleet and recognizing where their problems. And actually by keeping their planes flying more on time, by doing a better job in the predictive maintenance, they had higher customer satisfaction. They didn't have as many angry tweets. So they had kind of a bigger impact. It's sort of that, you know, things you wouldn't see as correlated in the past again. So if we do a better job keeping our planes flying on time, well then we're going to have a lot less unhappy customers. So rather than having to answer a bunch of angry tweets and, you know, maybe what we want to do is look at this kind of sensor data that's coming off the plane. So, but you know, if you think about that, the, this is not, it's not unstructured data. It has some structure. Tweets have structure, Facebook likes have structure, social media data has structure, log files have structure, machine data has structure, but it's not traditional kind of structure that you can necessarily just go and run SQL against, right? So what FlexZone allows you to do is basically pull all that data into Vertica. You can explore it, see what you have, and then if you decide you want to analyze it, you can actually analyze it right inside of FlexZone, but if you really want to analyze it with the highest performance, you can materialize it with one button right into Vertica, pull it right in, and basically it's something called auto schematization. So it really provides a lot of power, and it really provides a bridge to the worlds of things like Hadoop, NoSQL, and it allows you know Vertica to just be used for much, much more data. It's something we've our customer advisory board, we talked to them about this, we've never had customers so excited about a new feature as this feature. We've done a bunch of other things too, but that's that's probably the biggest one. That actually sounds pretty exciting, because yeah, cool. in theory you're, you're connecting the dots between that sensor data from the airplane and the tweets to see, it, is there a crossover? Uh, that's just one example, but it's, it's all of these new data types which are really what's growing these days and what companies are looking to get their hands around and organizations are looking to get their hands around. It's, it's not just companies, but obviously, you know, something like Conser Conservation International, right, with the photos that are coming off these cameras and the temperature sensors. It's the same idea, right? It's, it's taking all of these new forms and new types of data and being able to explore it and then analyze it and then serve up solutions and serve up answers. Because that's the other thing that's been going on. You know, Vertica Systems has been in business since 2005 and became part of HP since 2011. And we've watched a gradual pro progression from, you know, in the early days, it was what can Vertica do? What does Vertica do? How does it work? How fast is it? Now it's more like, what can I do with Vertica? What kinds of problems can I solve with this technology? So the conversation is definitely shifting to much more of a help me solve my business issue or my, you know, help me do a better job of analyzing species or whatever it might be. That's not a business issue per se, but it's, you know, it's not just technology speeds and feeds anymore. We do great with speeds and feeds, but we need to be able to answer more types of questions and to do that and to really do it effectively effectively we need to analyze more types of data so we really think we're leading the industry with this. We've also built Java into the product now so which we've always supported C++ and we've also supported the R statistical language but now Java is included in Vertic as well so the other thing that allows us to do we've, we've built various types of data parsers that we can use to you know, pull all of this different type of data into FlexZone, but now our developers and our customers and our partners can build their own parsers as well. So you've got some weird kind of data that's coming off some weird type of sensor that's unique to your business. No problem, you can use either Java, you can use C++, you can build your own parser, you can share it with our community, share it in our marketplace, you can even sell it if you want. So it gives all sorts of opportunity for Vertica to be used for all kinds of new things. So we're really excited about it.